Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. I'm still in the workshop. I'm almost out and I've got one last job to do on the Jeep really before it's mission ready. And it's fitting these solar panels. I've bought a couple of solar panels. They come as a pair and these are made by EcoFlow. Um, although I've been sponsored by them in the past, I actually bought these myself. Yeah, big boy now. Um, but I've got two panels. They're 100 watts each um, and they're solid fixed panels in an aluminium frame. They're monocrystalline, IP68, about six kilos each, and they can take around 50 kilos weight on top of them. And they're designed to be outside all year round. So that's kind of perfect for me because I really don't want to be taking these things off when they're on there. So I've got the panels here with all the cables and I've got some parallel split cables here too. Um, but I'll put the specifications to the panel in the description below. Obviously this is not a sponsored video. Um, you can have a look at them. There are probably better panels out there, I'm sure there are, but these should suit me pretty well. The panels are tempered glass, so obviously you want to be kind of careful with them when you're handling them. And like a lot of decent panels, they're coming with the MC4 connector there, which is great. So they can be used with pretty much anything. You can sort of see that I've already butchered my panels a little bit in terms of the frame. That's got holes drilled in it. I've put cutouts for the cables. Originally, I was going to have these panels wired up in series, but I'm using a EcoFlow River Pro 720 watt hour battery. And if I wired them up in series, I did test it, the voltage is too high. So for my little battery, I need to wire them up in parallel. Ignoring these cutouts here, which were for the series setup. So this was gonna go through there and connect to that one. Um, I've drilled some holes to bolt these panels together and that's gonna be my first step. I would probably only use stainless hardware for this. So you might think that looks really strong. No, not at all. If I pick that up in the, in the middle, it'll just go like that. Um, but the point is just to get them in position, really. Those bolts are really just there for supporting uh, structure. Um, now I'm gonna put these... Chill out, mate. Be your turn soon, don't worry. Um, now I'm just gonna put these load bars on. So th these are the load bars that come with the uh, Wildland Desert Cruiser rooftop tent. If you remember, they, they sit on the tent. You can put about 100 kilos on them, provided your roof can, along with the tent and whatever else you put on top of it. But regardless of that detail, they're gonna make a really good frame for these solar panels. And I'll have the solar panels set just below it. Uh, so if something flat is going across the load bars, it can, it can still be used. You can see that the way I'm doing it is it's definitely not going to be to everyone's liking, drilling holes and stuff, but um, this is nine and a half, uh, ten and a half to get this Allen head to sit in. It goes straight through and then it bolts in and it just sits a little bit flush and looks a little bit nicer. I'm using like a, a big washer and then a little one. Ooh. Um, just to go on here. If you are going to choose the Mikey Butchery way, then... Uh, you can over tighten these because all this aluminium stuff it just it just can't handle it just tidying up the the bolt holes a little bit i've just popped a little bit of sealant in there and uh just cleaning it up wet wipes are actually pretty good for doing this stops the weather getting in even though it can just get in over our house but that's just what I tell myself you know what I mean so I can sleep at night I've opened up that notch a little bit there I'm just gonna have this bit of conduit going through like that fantastic so the EcoFlow connector is coming through there um, and it's a five meter cable, so it should be enough reach. And then we just have to connect these things up. So we have negative, which is going to be this. And then this is negative as well. And then that would go in there. And then we have positive. It's oh, not doing it. There we go. Um, yeah, positive, obviously, like that, and, and just like that there. Well, that's it, all done, all cable tied up and, and looking smart. 
shouldn't be any noise really and any vibrations and stuff i mean it's a fat chance you'd hear anything up on the roof there but you know it's just for peace of mind and uh we'll see how this goes i, I know there'll be questions saying well it's an aluminium rooftop tent why didn't you just drill holes straight through the aluminium shell and just put the panels on that and then have the load bars doing whatever but uh i, I don't know i just don't i just don't feel comfortable drilling holes through my roof tent maybe it's because it's quite new i just have it's not old enough yet you know but this is just the way i've chosen to do it the load bars don't bother me drilling those i, I can build new load bars really easily you can buy alumini aluminium extrusion 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 is it extrusion you can buy that aluminium shit anyway on amazon it doesn't cost a lot and you can get little rubber end caps for it you could make these mounts fit so it's a piece of cake to build new load bars better ones than these if i really wanted to um but this just gives me a nice on off frame i can just take the whole thing off um by taking the bolts out the side here but you know you can do it whatever way you want um but anyway it's time to get this vehicle out the garage i've actually blown the turbo up on the jeep by the way so this is not the last job i've got a new turbo coming it's the same one so it's not a particularly difficult install because all the infrastructure's done but i kinked the oil return pipe under the vehicle and the, the turbo flooded with oil it overheated massively spewed oil out the exhaust and out, out the turbine at the front just totally destroyed it so uh, it still runs and it still makes boost and stuff but it's like it's on the edge basically so that was a very expensive and stupid mistake by me so this is gonna go on These nut surfs here, two there. Can't really show you much of what I'm doing because uh, I'm up high up and just kind of getting it installed really, but it's, it's going on nicely, pretty straightforward. Um, these are slightly twisted as you can see, but not so much that you can't install it. And it's pretty easy just to take a screwdriver and just tilt it down like that. I probably should test this now, but you can see the sun's behind the trees, so I'm not sure how it's going to go. Oh, input. It's doing stuff. Oh. I mean, you, the sunlight's pretty skank at the moment, so we're getting 34, 37, 38 watts input. 39. So the sun's come out a bit stronger now. We're, we just went up to a hundred and six watts um, considering the sun's behind a tree and clouds and it's in and out that's pretty damn good and the angle of the vehicle is quite bad as well if it was pointing directly at the sun we'd see a lot more well there we go another big job done on the jeep so we're a couple of days on and i've just had it out in the garden sort of in between work and stuff and uh, the most i've generated from the panels now with the tent open like pointing directly at the sun um, is 189 watts. Um, pro probably could get a little bit more of that out of it as well. You never know when the summer gets hotter. I mean, any power in when the vehicle is stationary is a huge bonus. We've had to leave camps in the past because the fridge is using a lot of power and we've got stuff in there and we've got our little son with us and we don't want things to go bad and like have a bit of a rough time if we're out on the road for a week or two. As I said, I mounted them just below the roof bars. There is a slight cut, cut out on one side that looks a bit skanky. I'll just get a rubber grommet or something and pop that in there and make it look nice. So yeah, that's it. You know, just just got to get that new turbo in and it's it's ready to roll and all the camp is packed and the things the things just waiting. Should be here next week the turbo. So that job will be done and then we'll be back out. But I've got a little bit of a. Uh, an outro for somebody out there who I think watches the channel I know his brother does and his brother 
messaged me and um, asked me whether I could uh, give him a message. His name's Ricky Roberts and um, he lives in Wales in Rhonda. I think I've pronounced that correctly. I do apologise if I haven't. Um, Ricky has the same condition as me, ulcerative colitis. I think he also has Crohn's as well and he was diagnosed quite young. And, uh, you know, he's having a bit of a rough time with it, basically. Um, his brothers sort of suggested that he's, you know, he's having he's having a tough time, you know, and, and it, is, it is a really difficult thing to have. I mean, there's obviously a lot worse things out there that, that, that you can have, but it's not really a competition. These, these things are difficult. Um, you know, I, I've got ulcerative colitis and the last two weeks have been have been really difficult for me. Um, I've just had a, a really bad bad time with it. It's just kind of hit me hard. I I think to be honest it was it was the introduction of soy milk into my diet. I started drinking soy milk and um, it just completely f***ed me up. Like st still feeling the effects of it actually. Like this morning I've been on the loo like maybe 20 times. You know just <laughs> just living the dream basically mate living the dream so you know you're not you're not alone out there you know it, it is it is a very difficult thing to have um you know and you have my my sympathies and thoughts but um the one thing i will say is is don't let it stop you living your life it's so important to fight on and fight through it um you see me out pretty regularly um, I haven't been out that much recently actually, I've just been a bit busy with work and stuff and I retired this off-road because the, um, I retired this in the garage I mean, it's off veg in, in Swedish but it's like where you, you deregister it for a period of the year because you know in spring the roads get really squishy and it's very irresponsible to drive them at that time because you trash the roads for the vehicles that use them for work like the working vehicles so I never drive at this time of year in spring when, when the snow's just thawed and the, the tracks are soft so it's a great time for me to to be in the workshop and it's a bit easier for me then um, if I'm having a flare-up and stuff with the old ulcerative colitis because you know I can just run to the house but there have been many occasions where I have not made it those 25 meters to my house um, you know many many occasions you know it, it can it can be it can be quite bad I mean, it's almost easier sometimes being out in the forest alone in the wilderness you know with it because no one's around and if i'm having a tough time you know who's about i can just you know like a bear bear's shit in the woods and so can i and you can kind of go anywhere really within reason so it's a bit easier really and, and it's one of the reasons why i prefer winter here some people can't believe that you can be out taking a dump in the woods in those temperatures but it's really not a big deal in the winter when there's no mosquitoes it's it's much much nicer and that's kind of one of the reasons i prefer the winter because of there's no bugs there's no insects there's no horse flies and knot and sveen and, and brems and um mug and all these flies that are biting you and trying to get a piece of you basically to survive you know that can be a real challenging thing so the hot summers here um they can be really difficult but but it doesn't stop me going out and enjoying them and uh for the future i'm just thinking of buying like a little folding sort of toilet chair um that i can have a mosquito net around and have it set up somewhere in the in the forest so if i'm wild camping with my backpack or i'm in the jeep i can still carry it they weigh nothing they really don't weigh anything at all and neither is the mosquito net so you can just have it next to your tarp or your camp or something or the vehicle and uh you know just just have it there so if you're having a real off day at least you've got that safe haven from the bugs so there are always solutions to being able to be out um if your condition's really bad if you're just going through a bad time so my advice to you would, would just be to try not to let it stop you doing the things you want to do. Um, and, uh, you know, a large part of it, I think, is mentally overcoming it as well. Like, you know, like I said this morning, I've been in the loo like 20, 30 times this morning. It totally writ off my morning. Um, you know, ha having a lot of, having, having a fantastic time, obviously not. Um, but, 
you know, I could have quite easily stayed in, you know, this, I had a hot shower, because after, after I've had this rough ride, like, I'm shivering, I'm freezing, like, because of the, you know, the effects it has on my body, you know, it really, really messes it up, and, uh, you know, so I had a hot shower, I got myself together, and I thought, you know, I've got to get out and crack on, you know, I've got things to do, and I can't just let this feeling sort of own my day. Um, so even though I still feel like I need to go, which I actually don't, um, it's quite easy to dwell on that feeling and let it kind of checkmate you into being inside and sitting on your ass, looking at the computer, playing video games and stuff or whatever. I mean, to be honest, playing video games isn't an issue. Like, you know, it, it can that can be a nice distraction from it as well, especially on a rainy day. You know, there's nothing wrong with that and there's nothing wrong with watching TV, you know, and watching a good film or something. But, you know, if you, if you are an outdoor person is what I mean and you want to get out, um you know, then then it might stop you doing that. So sort of getting out and being distracted and, and taking your mind away from that feeling can actually can actually make it go away. And even moving your legs and doing exercise can kind of make that kind of tingling fatigue vanish and, and make you feel a lot better. So I would really try and fight it, mate, if you can. Um, don't let it own your life. Don't let it control your life. You know, give it the time it needs when it needs it. But, but try and take that time back when it's yours and, um, you know, and, and, and be strong and overcome it. And if you are out camping and you are having a shit time, literally, as, as, as I have to at times, you know, just, just buy a few things to help you out. Like I said, like that little portable toilet or whatever, they weigh nothing. It's like one kilo, one and a half kilos with a, with a mosquito net in the pack. I mean, you're in Wales, so you're probably not going to have the same issues I have with flies. Um, but you can make it a comfortable experience for yourself when you are having a flare up and still enjoy the things you want to enjoy. So yeah, it's easier said than done. I understand that better than, better than most, I'm sure. And I'm really sorry you've had to go through this, um, and you're going through this and I hope that in time you grow out of it because that does happen. You know, I've had messages from hundreds of different people um, with this and some people have said to me you know I got diagnosed with this when I was 35 now I'm 53 and it's been gone for the last 15 16 years you know and it hasn't come back you know th these things are they, they're not fully understood and um, with more and more people getting diagnosed with it and and everything else it's hard to understand where these things are originate from but I can tell you one thing, eating the wrong foods, crap foods, eating lots of crappy sugar and all that sort of stuff and, and pizza and just shit food and, and stress will make it worse. Like enjoying your life, being happy, eating good food, not overeating, you know, I think for me is like, you know, kept me going through it really. And, uh, you know, and that's that, mate. I, I, I hope I hope you I hope this has helped you. It probably hasn't, you know, these are just words, but um maybe it's given you a bit of energy and a move in the right direction, or maybe you're just looking at me and going, Shut up, you t you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um thanks for watching guys. Ricky, stay strong, mate. And uh I'll see you in another video. Take care. a hole in that <laughs> I shouldn't joke but you've got to stay positive mate <laughs>